hello everyone and uh, welcome to this course uh, which I named uh, by Offensive Software Exploitation or OSE. Now this course was uh, in the past I would say I used to teach a course uh, called Hacking Techniques. It's already available at uh, or at least an old version of it actually is available on open security training and you can see you can uh, this was the course uh, you can uh, learning outcomes all of those ex ex the description uh, topics you can see the slides any material that was used you can see uh, you can download and use any of them uh, so feel free to use them uh, yeah, that's the, I would say that's an old version of this course, but of this hacking techniques course, uh, I did do a couple of other updates, but this is still, I, I would say, still a good one. Now, what I did at uh, Champlain College is I took only the exploitation part and taught that as a course, and I named it as offensive software exploitation. So in the hacking techniques, as you can see here, it covers scanning, fingerprinting, uh, reconnaissance, all those kind of stuff. Even in the back, at that time, we used to use backtrack. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but like I said, that was the old version of the course. Uh, the recent one uh, does use Kali. Anyway, these were the topics that were covered. So they are not uh, just focusing on exploitation. But this course is a little bit different. It only covers, uh, it only focuses on the exploitation part. So uh, let me just explain a little bit about it uh, more so you'll have an idea what will be covered. Everything until, uh, everything in this course uh, is actually based on material which is already online. So there is nothing like uh, rocket science and stuff that is not available anywhere else. You can find them already online. I just, I would say, I uh, compile them together and I'm gonna run these videos sessions uh, to help maybe uh, make the understanding of uh, uh, different techniques of exploitation a little bit more easier. The software I use for the exploitation, some of them, I would say maybe one or two of them were written by me. Others, you can find them on ExploitDB. I will refer to them. You'll find them in each lab, which, which software we are using. Also, I, I use Stefan Bradshaw's uh, Vulnerable Server, and that's a very famous application, which is uh, vulnerable by uh, by design, and it's, it's, it was developed that way to help people uh, get into software exploitation. So that's the software which we're using. Uh, tools, mainly Immunity Debugger uh, and the uh, Corlan Teams Mona uh, plugin. We will show and I show how how you you install and configure that. That's not a a big uh, a big problem. Uh, Kali Linux, you'll need that for the a couple of the <coughs> generating the shell code itself and for testing and fuzzing and all of those kind of stuff. Uh, I use CFF Explorer, even though there are others. I, I do. I will refer to them, especially in. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I will refer to them whenever possible. Like there are other uh, really good tools. Uh, we'll see them, or at least I will mention them. We might not use all of them. You'll need probably a, a Netcat, uh, Windows Netcat version. So these are uh, mainly the tools. But I, I will update this. This is still. Uh, work in development. The content is available, but these recordings, which I'm doing now, are uh, I'm recording them as we go through the course. Uh, targets used. I used uh, 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 Windows 10. I just downloaded one from Microsoft's VMs. The current version I'm using is this one. You can find them. Uh, you can download them from here. I would say, except probably, I I won't promise, but uh, I would say except for the Egg Hunters lab because it requires a different Egg Hunter. The one that runs on uh, Pre-10 uh, doesn't run on a Windows 10 machine because of the 
I would say the system calls that are used. So uh, it depends if there, if I find time, I will do the Egg Hunter on Windows 10. But what I did in this course at the at the college uh, was the one using uh, Windows 7. So you might need to find the Windows 7. And I think some people on Twitter have already shared the URLs to download those from archive.org. Now, the topics that are going to be covered are, uh, like today uh, in this video, we will cover the basics, uh, the P uh, format, the uh, DLLs, what is a DLL, just the basics about uh, an executable, I would say, and why I want you to at least have an idea of these basics. Uh, then we'll go into bug hunting and fuzzing, explain what's the idea of bug hunting, uh, how do you do bug hunting, uh, what's fuzzing, how do you do fuzzing. We won't dive too much into those, uh, but at least you'll have a, a fair good idea of both concepts and how to do them. Then we'll go into, uh, we'll talk about memory corruption, because exploitation is mostly about memory corruption and then buffer overflow. So we'll we'll start into that. In each, by the way, each one of these, there will be, I would say, uh, uh, a theoretical part and a hands-on part. So the course is not going to be just theory and me blah, 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 talking and you listening. No, uh, you will be, you will have lots of work to do by yourself, either by following what I'm doing or you go and repeat whatever I did on some other application. <clears throat> I'll also cover a little bit about Metasploit, uh, the Metasploit framework, because it's uh, we'll need that for different reasons, whether it's generating shell code or even we'll need it later on when we do some post-exploitation stuff. Uh, mitigation techniques, I will also explain a little bit about, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say a little bit, but I will explain about the most uh, common uh, mitigation techniques, whether they were techniques uh, applied by the system, by the compiler, uh, what's the difference, I will cover those also. Uh, SEH and jumping strategies, so we will talk about uh, structure exception handler, how to uh, uh, do exploitation using SEH, uh, taking advantage of the SEH. Also, what are the different jumping strategies that you can use to jump and move around uh, in memory? Because you'll need that. It's not always going to be straightforward, so you'll need different methods and techniques to jump around in memory. Egg Hunter, that's a really famous and uh, good technique that you will use to maybe throw your payload somewhere, I mean the shell code somewhere, and then you'll need some other shell code to go fetch that and execute it. So that's what uh, basically an egg hunter will be doing. I will also explain what uh, return-oriented programming is. So Rob, we will have uh, uh, at least, <clears throat> we will cover uh, what what is ROP? Uh, why is it available? How to use the tools available that we can use? And we'll do at least two examples of uh, exploitation using ROP. By the way, most of the topics will will include two examples. Uh, sometimes they will be on vulnerable server and a, and a real life uh, application. And sometimes it might be just on two real life applications. It, it depends. <clears throat> Post-exploitation, I will cover a little bit about post-exploitation, but mainly here, uh, the thing I'm focusing on in post-exploitation is tunneling and how to, uh, I would say, further advance in a network and reach networks that you didn't have direct access to. So how can I exploit a system, gain access to it, and use that access and lever or let's say leverage the access on that on that system to reach another uh, system in another network maybe so that's mainly how uh, what mostly i will focus on in the post exploitation part and especially with the tunneling especially let's say because i've seen this many times uh, usually if our tunnels are straightforward uh, it, it might be easy, but dealing with reverse tunnels, I would say that's a, it's, it's just requires a little bit of uh, understanding. So we'll do at least 
also two labs on uh, post-exploitation with a focus, as I said, on the uh, tunneling and port forwarding and stuff like that. Finally, manual code injection. So how can I take an application and manually inject my malicious uh, payload into it? Uh, there, there are many techniques. Uh, we will at least maybe cover two of them. Uh, one is already very well known and the other, I would say, is not very well known, but it's a really good one. But it depends on the understanding of how the application works. So we will do two of them and those are uh bo both of them will be uh, like i said uh manual code injection so it's not about using a tool which you just say hey go take the shell code and inject it into uh this executable it's not going to be like that uh, video recordings like you see here uh, the arabic version is already available i've until this uh, recording we do have a fair uh, uh, good amount of recordings because there wasn't at this time any English version, uh, but as you can see here, both Elan Security and INI, which are, I would say, they, they are both the same company now, uh, decided to sponsor this uh, English version. So they will be helping me, uh, I would say, they they will be sponsoring this. How they are going to help me? Uh, that will will uh, that will, we will see. But anyway, uh, thanks to them for. Uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to do these recordings for uh, for the public. And uh, yeah, uh, that's basically, or let me just tell two things, maybe just before I finish this main uh, page. So useful resources, I would say the resource number one is Corlin Teams blog. Please go check that. Most of the work, if not, I would say, yeah, I would say most of the work is based on on peter uh his work on on the corland team they have a really great series of uh, uh posts and they are very detailed you i won't go into that level of detail it's uh i would say it's crazy the level of detail that they have there so please if these videos are not enough and you're still curious about something or you need to you like you say i need more about this please go check their uh, their uh, their blog posts especially for exploitation i know they do not cover like post exploitation stuff and like manual injection uh, these kind of stuff but and maybe even meta exploit uh, but still everything uh, i would say everything related to exploitation is found there so that's i would say your resource number one everything else i will keep adding to not probably this page but at least in each single lab slides you will see uh, that there uh, before i go to the slides and the labs since i mentioned them uh, i would say this work itself or this course itself would not have happened without the people who are putting their work uh, out there so thanks to everyone who has uh, contributed and published their work for the public to take it advantage of. So thank you guys, uh, uh, each one of you. I don't want to mention names. So uh, the way I kind of now it's structured, you'll see uh, there's a labs directory with the labs inside of it. Okay. Uh, network is a little bit slow. So you'll see the labs. These are the labs that are until now uh, on the other version of the course, we have we are currently at lab six, or actually we are at lab seven. That's the one which will be coming, and don't worry, we will catch up with them, and we'll have the exact same amount of labs. So the labs will be inside here. You'll see the lab document. Uh, the readme is just this, saying to, thanking you for your interest, and if there's a file, you'll find this file. Uh, shared or if there's like a, an exploit template or a, if there's any files to be shared you'll find them over here any file uh, that has a password please remember the password will be infected uh, or the the word infected that's a password i use that so and i think you'll find that in in this lab so uh, see the password is infected we'll come back to that so that's basically the labs <laughs> notes if there are uh, topics covered uh, 
which I write some notes. I will be sharing the notes and I'll give the number of that section. So this was section six. I might have, I, I think we did other sections with other notes. So I will search for them and just upload them. But that's how this will be uh, structured. Slides, you'll find the slides. They just kind of, I would say, help you understand a couple of the topics. They They are not to be used as the only uh, resource for studying no they usually help me with my uh, help me guide the the presentation guide the session so please don't depend on them and uh, don't depend on them for your understanding and try to see each one of those uh, references which i have in every uh, all of the slides because at the end the slides were uh, prepared depending on like I said, other people's work. So that's mainly the course, uh, how it's structured. I would say it's uh, good if you uh, like copy the the uh, clone. I mean, clone the uh, the repository. So later on, whenever we do an update, you can just pull that update. So that way you'll uh, you'll stay up to date with the course material that I will be sharing. Everything will be over here. Like I said, I will add update this with this uh, English version because now now this is video number one. So you'll find it in in this playlist. Yeah, and that's it for, uh, I would say, for this introduction to the course. I hope it will be. Oh, before I end, by the way, two things. This course will be really helpful for you if you are doing your uh, if you do any course which has exploitation, then these topics are more than enough for that course. And I, and if I want to name topics here, uh, sorry, certificates here, I would say OSCP, CPPT from Iran security and OSCP from offensive security. Uh, I would say uh, even uh, the exploit development course from offensive uh, from Iran security. It covers the Windows part. I'm not going to go into Linux. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I will just cover the Windows part. And it will also be more than enough, by the way, for your OSCE from, Elon, uh, from Offensive Security. Sorry. So every course that has an exploitation part, whether that course is just about exploitation or it has an exploitation part, this course will be more than enough, by the way, to pass that section. OK, so uh, if you want to pass those certificates, especially I, like I said, again, especially the exploitation part, then this course will definitely help you succeed uh, there. I will not be covering any web topics. I, I'm not interested in that area, but it's mainly uh, these are the topics. They we might add something in the future, but at least for now, this is what will be covered in this course. So I would say that's all for the, this uh, recording, this video, and we will start the our first video with lab one number one, and our first subject will be uh, the basics about the portable executable format, what's a DLL, etc., all of that. So. Get your system ready, your VMs ready, like you see I'm running in a VM, and get your tools ready, and let's get started. Thank you, and see you in the next video.